Next thing we need to look at in this unit is the, what's called the NZ plot and forms of decay. So we're going to have a look at the relationship between the number of protons and the number of neutrons just for small nuclei in the first place, then talk about what happens as nuclei get bigger, and then crucially we're going to think about how and why nuclei decay. Okay, we're going to move on towards thinking about why the periodic table is the way it is, why is there a maximum size, what kind of isotopes do you expect to get of different atoms. So just a quick reminder how we write the nucleus, this is the symbols, so this number we give the symbol A, this is the mass or what we now really call the nucleon number, so this is the total number of protons and neutrons, here's our symbol X, and Z is what we call the atomic or the proton number. Okay, to work out N, the number of neutrons, we do A minus Z. So that should be fairly familiar just to make a point here that if we're doing an NZ plot, we're plotting the number of neutrons N against the number of protons Z. Okay, for small atoms, here's the simplest atom we could have, one proton and no neutrons. This is hydrogen 1. Okay, we get hydrogen 2, deuterium. Okay, that's also a stable nucleus. We get helium-3. Okay, we work our way up. Here are all the stable nuclei. Okay, you'll notice they're forming fairly distinct kind of pattern. Okay, a little bit complicated up towards the end. But you'll notice there's a fairly linear relationship we're getting. If I took number 12, for example, here, magnesium, stable isotopes of magnesium, magnesium-24, 25, 26. Okay, here's aluminium. Aluminium um, stable isotope is number 27. Aluminium 27, okay? So a fairly um, consistent number that for one proton we tend to get one neutron. We can get the odd extra neutron in there as well. Okay, the only stable nuclei that exist with fewer protons, sorry, fewer neutrons and protons are actually hydrogen 1 and helium 3. Okay, so what we've just looked at there is this part of this graph, just the start of the of the um, NZ plot. As we go further up, you'll notice that this red line here, where n equals z, these stable nuclei, all these little blue dots, these curve away from there. It's easier to put in more neutrons to the nucleus because, of course, they're not being repelled. They're quite happy to sit there. The reason there's a limit to the maximum size of the nucleus is that the protons are pushing away from each other. Okay, We'll talk about what holds the nucleus together uh, quite soon, but there is a maximum limit. So up here at bismuth number 83, that's the biggest nucleus that can actually be stable. Okay, So if you've got a nucleus which isn't one of these little dots, then it will be unstable. So what we need to think about is, well, how can it become stable? Be to become stable, it's got to get itself back onto these blue dots. So it might be in this area up here. Okay, these things have got, if you like, too many neutrons. Okay, these are beta minus emitters. You'll have talked about beta decay. We'll go back over that in a sec. If it's just up too big up here, then it'll be an alpha emitter. So this kind of brown region, these are alpha emitters. These are nuclei which are just too big, so they emit alpha particle. And then the third form of decay, the one that you won't have come across before, these things down here are things with too few neutrons, or if you like, too many protons. Okay, and these become stable by being beta plus emitters. Okay, so we'll talk about that in a sec. So here's our first problem. Above the line, too many um, neutrons. So this is what's called a neutron-rich nuclei nucleus. So here's carbon-14. Stable isotopes of carbon are carbon-12, carbon-13. Carbon-14 is not stable. What's the answer here? Well, you've got eight no neutrons and only six protons. The answer is to turn a neutron into a proton. So the way that happens is by the emission of a beta particle. Okay, so what we've got is carbon-14. The carbon has got six protons, uh, but a neutron turns into a proton. So now I've got seven because I've got seven, this can't be a C anymore, so number seven in the predictable is nitrogen. The top number slightly confusing, okay, this is protons plus neutrons. Well, the number of neutrons has gone down by one, but the number of protons has gone up by one, so we've got the same total. And the thing that we've emitted is the beta particle. Again, these numbers might be a little bit confusing. Okay, the mass number is zero because the number of nucleons, the number of protons and neutrons is zero. 
and the bottom number which we've thought of that being protons you might think well how can a proton have a number of minus one well it's probably better if we start thinking this as charge so the charge is minus one so this bottom law here is about the conservation of charge we've got six relative charge seven minus one so you'll notice the top line and the bottom line add up okay here's our second one this is neut uh, neutron poor so too few neutrons Okay, the solution for the nucleus for this is to turn a proton into a neutron. So we start off with carbon-11. Okay, it releases this particle we'll talk about much more, which is called a positron. Okay, so if you thought that all matter was protons, neutrons, and electrons, you've just met, met your first particle, which isn't one of those three. This is a positron. It's, a, it's like a positive electron. It's actually an antiparticle. We'll talk about that much more soon. Okay, what we've, so what we've done is we've turned a proton into a neutron. So if we write the equation, we started off with carbon-11. We've got one fewer protons, but we've got the same number of protons and neutrons together. We've released this particle, which has got a mass number of zero, a nucleon number of zero, but a charge of plus one. Okay, here's our third one, fortunately a little bit easier. This is something which is just too big. So there's just too much force between all the protons here, pushing it apart. This does alpha decay. That's the emission of a particle which is two protons and two neutrons. Okay, so what happens is the mass number goes down by four. The proton number goes down by two. There's our alpha particle.